I want to set a standard so the devil and every imp in hell can understand what the standard is. And it starts with us. I'm going to move quickly so we don't waste time. Acts the first chapter and the fourth verse. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore come together, they ask him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore unto the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come on you. And you will, rec- you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly... Suddenly, we've been a church coming in November 24 years, but I believe there's about to be a suddenly happen. Don't you love it when the the man lay at the pool for 38 years, but all of a sudden there was a suddenly. Don't you thank God that there was 12 years that a woman had the issue of blood, but all of a sudden there was a suddenly. Don't you, aren't you happy that All of the mistakes that Peter made when he stepped out on the water and lost his view of God, all he had to do was call on the name of Jesus and instantly. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one place, in one one place, in one place. I don't believe that just means geographically, but I believe there's one place for the kingdom to get. I believe there's one place. I can't stop here. I got to go. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled. Somebody say all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Every believer should be filled and utilizing the power of the Holy Ghost so that when you come into a place of battle... You are not just speaking words, but you are speaking words straight from the throne room of God. It is time. If we we can get in here and we can shout and we can praise God and we can be all excited about this new title. Listen. You, you can call me whatever you want to, but, but I want you to know that I understand my role, whether you say apostle or whether I say apostle. I understand what God has called us to, and it's not about a title. It's about a position. And I don't mean a position in the house, in in the physical. I mean it's a position on the battlefield. It's a position that we will assume because of the authority and the anointing that has just been set on this house. And it's time that we understand where the power comes from. So what does the Holy Spirit have the power to do? How do we access the power of the Holy Ghost? The first thing I want to tell you tonight is the Holy Spirit gives us the power to be witnesses. It said in verse 8 of chapter 1, But ye shall receive power that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, the other most parts of the earth. 
See, and I want you to understand, if you go to a court of law and they call you to be a witness and you get on that stand and you sit there and you say nothing, you are a useless witness. To be a witness, you cannot be silent. To be a witness, you can't always be politically correct. Don't worry, I ain't going all the way in. I'm just going to tell you that it's time that we stop worrying about the division and start thinking about the unity. And the unity comes from getting in one place, one mind, one accord, and saying, God, I am willing to do whatever it is that you have called me to do. The Holy Spirit gives you power to be witnesses. The Holy Spirit gives you power to transform. The Holy Spirit power transforms us. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Have you ever went to a business... And you walked into the business and maybe the bathroom was dirty and the service was bad and the food wasn't good. And you walked in and you thought, I'm never going to I'm never gonna go in there again. And you go by that business and, and, and the outside never changes. But one day you drive by and you see a sign and it says, under new management. See, what happens when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, Bishop, is you are now not your own... You are now under new management because, see, you can be saved and not filled with the Holy Ghost and go to heaven. But I just got to be honest with you. I don't know why you'd want to because he says that he came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. I'm here to declare and to decree to you tonight in the process of transformation. He releases us from bondage. He releases us from the power of sin. He releases us from addiction. There's people that come to this church. I'm going to get real, real fast. There's people that come to this church that are addicted addicted to pain meds and I'm telling you we have the power in our right hand to say no in the name of Jesus you are released you are set free that comes with the infilling power of the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit empowers us against the enemy See, Satan is not scared of you, but he is terrified of the one in you. 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Ghost inside of you is far more powerful than the devil on the outside of you. I said that de- the, the Holy Ghost on the inside of you is far more powerful than the devil that's on the outside of you. You know one reason why we don't have testimony service at High Praises Church? Because y'all don't know how to testify. You get up and you go, well, I just I want to give God praise. The devil's been on my back all week. Bless his holy name. And see, what I want you to say is what the Word says. You say, but that's not what I have. And when you understand the power of your words, when you understand the power of the Holy Ghost that is in you, and you begin to speak what the Word of God says, the things around you have to shift. The things around you have to change. And I decree and declare that if you want it tonight, while this apostle, this man of God is in this house and has spoken this blessing, you can step up under the same anointing that I have tonight. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. There's a cartoon 
that I'd like to talk to the writer and the drawer and whatever, the artist, and tell him how much I don't appreciate that. And here's the cartoon. Y'all ever seen the cartoon where they got an angel here and a devil here? Y'all, y'all, can, y'all can say that, that you don't believe this. I, okay. I do. I believe that Satan will use anything to desensitize us even as children. And, and I'll tell you something else. What did you hear when you were a little kid? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. That's a lie straight out of hell. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. But I just want to bring light to the and, and, and if you know the cartoon artist, tell him I love him, but he needs to get saved with this because see, we have we have we have come to the place where we really think that there's a struggle between good and evil. The struggle's not between good and evil, the struggle is inside of you deciding to follow good or evil. Because I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a declaration. Somebody said, I had a man tell me one time, don't ever pick a fight with the devil. I said, what? I said, what do you mean? I said, his whole life is about coming against me. I don't have to pick a fight with him. But understand, and I'm going to make this, I've said it a lot. If you're part of this church, you've heard me say it. But I'm going to make a decree tonight that Satan has no power. Now, if you're shouting, I want to ask you something. Why are you scared of dying early? Why are you scared of getting some kind of disease? See, the only reason that the power of God is not operating in our life is we do not activate it when we should. I look at it like setting the alarm on this church building. We've got an awesome alarm on this church. But if we don't punch the button when we leave, they could come in here and rob us blind. Satan is a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you will get up every day and say, according to Psalm 91, my children are safe, my my finances are safe, devil, I rebuke you, there's no way that you can come against me because greater is he that is in my belly than is in yours. The Holy Spirit empowers you against the enemy. The Holy Spirit gives you guidance. How many needs guidance? John 16, 13. How be it when He, the Spirit. First of all, it's not an it, it's a He. The Spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. We're listening to the wrong voices. Not that people are not good. I love people. Don't y'all love people? Their actions sometimes are questionable, but I love people. Amen? But we can't get that mixed up. We still love people no matter how they act. Because Jesus does. And y'all know that you all have those family members, right? That always got something to say. Now, see, if you're black, it's Pookie and them. And if, and if you're white, it's Bubba and Elmer. But it's the same spirit. And what I'm telling you is the Holy Spirit will give you guidance when the voices around you are speaking stupid stuff. The part of the work, part of the work of the Holy Ghost is to let us know when we've been doing wrong. He is a guide to us. In John 16, 7 and 8, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, will not come unto you. But I, but if I depart, I will send Him unto you. And when He is come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. To make us better, to make us stronger... To give us power is why the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. Now, how do we access the power of the Holy Ghost? I promise I won't be very much longer. Just stay with me. i got to get this word out. How can we access the power of the Holy Spirit? Be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
The beginning of a full relationship of the Holy Spirit is an event known in the Bible as being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, there are five separate times in the book of Acts when he talks about this special life-changing event of a believer. Acts 2, 120 odd disciples were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to what? Speak in tongues. Acts 8, the Samaritans became Christians through the ministry of of, uh, Philip and baptized in water. And then Peter and John hear about it, go and pray for the saved people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts number 9, Paul, the persecutor of the church, becomes a Christian. He's filled with the Holy Ghost. And he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. Acts 10, Cornelius and his household receive Christ. Acts 19, the disciples, about 12 men, uh, are prayed for by Paul and are filled with the Holy Ghost. When we put all these passages together, we learn some very important facts about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Number one, it's a separate experience to being born again. Number two, you can be born again and not baptized in the Holy Spirit. Number three, you may or may not automatically be baptized with the Holy Spirit when you receive Jesus. Number four, there's a supernatural manifestation when a person is baptized with the Holy Ghost. And in every time, every mention in the Word, the supernatural manifestation is speaking with other tongues. I'm not asking everybody to accept this tonight. I'm just asking you to listen and be open. Friday would have been the 33rd anniversary of mine and LaDonna's marriage. And when when we married, she'd grown up Baptist. I love Baptist. But she didn't have no more understanding of what the Holy Ghost was than, than, than nothing. I took her to Paul Baggett's church in Millersville, Tennessee and we got in there and the first time we went in there they paired us up they told us to get in groups of four it's me LaDonna my friend Millard and this little granny woman with a Holy Ghost bun right up here and if you don't know what a Holy Ghost bun is it's something to behold (laughs) and he said I want you to start praying for one another and that little woman just started shimmying and shaking and she prayed and we walked out of there that night and LaDonna said don't you ever take me to a place like that again and you know what I said being the man of the house I said okay I picked that one you pick the next one but see what happened was there was a seed planted and one day I come home from my job at a little place called Screen Art off Middlebrook Pike I pulled up in the driveway I walked in I didn't see her and I went back to the bedroom and she's sitting in the middle of the bed crying and she said she was watching a minister on television and she said God I don't understand that but if it's you I want it and she said right there nobody nobody had to shun on who stole my Honda in her ear listen we're not about trying to teach you how to do something that's not godly but when you get honest with God and if you will be open to what the Lord has for you he will fill you and give you power and I promise you from that day to the day she went to heaven she was a mighty woman of God why it was because of the power of the Holy Ghost Live a life yielded to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Ephesians 5.18 Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now I want to I show you something that I learned through this. The Greek language has a verbal tense that don't exist in the English language. And it indicates an ongoing action. And that's the tense in the Greek that's actually used in this verse. And it literally means, when it says, be filled, what it really means is keep being filled with the Holy Spirit. What that means is because, what, 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 it, what it's trying to get us to understand is because we live life 
the power of God will drain from you in experiences that you find yourself in if you don't continually be filled with the Spirit. That means we need to keep being filled. That's why I told you this morning, church, what J.D. Knuckles, who ordained me to preach back in 1993, he, he looked at the congregation many times and he said, when we, the church, stop using the altar, we need not expect the sinner to use the altar. You know what that means? Is when you come in here and you feel a little weak, you need to get in this altar. You say, well, what if people think I'm backslid? What does it matter? I got news for you. If you don't stay filled, you will backslide. So how, how do we do that? How do, how do we stay filled? I'm almost done. Promise. That's not just preacher promise. See, my iPad won't, won't scroll no more. I'm at the end. So how do, we, how do we keep being filled? If you look on those verses after... The one I just read. It goes on that the key to continually being filled is worship. Being filled with the Holy Spirit means being under the control of the Holy Spirit. You can sing and worship all you want. But if there are areas of unyieldedness to the Lord in your life. You can't really be filled to the fullness of His Spirit. Listen, this is not a condemnation spirit. This is a a word that the Lord gave me right here that He said, this is a new level. This is a new place. And we've got to understand where the power comes from. It's essential that we keep our hearts soft, pliable, open to the Holy Ghost, and allow Him to... To do whatever he wants to do. And the last thing I want to tell you. Is you need to pray in tongues every day. Every day. Praying in tongues is so important for your spiritual growth. And you know I want you to understand. I pray in tongues every day. And it's because. Well let me say it this way. It's not because I think I'm some spiritual giant. It's because I recognize the need I have driving down the road. I go to Nashville every week. Every week I'm on that road back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes it's two or three times a week. And you know what? There's a lot of things that Satan could take me out with if he had any power. And that's how I look at it. I get in my truck and I say, thank you, Jesus, for making the way straight. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to make. And, and, and you know what that does? When I come into the, a place where the traffic is slowed down, I do not get mad. Even if it makes me late, I do not get mad because I trust Jesus. And I know that in that time, I'm not saying he caused the traffic jam, but in that moment that I am not driving all that time, he can minister something to me. You say, that's fanatical. Listen, listen, let me tell you something about being a fanatic. I am sick and tired of the devil stealing off my family. And I told him in 2016 it wouldn't happen again. And you know what? He came at me with my son being pronounced with cancer. And I went to my bedroom and I, listen, the worst thing you can ever do is let somebody pat you on the head and feel sorry for you. Listen, you can appreciate their love and you can thank them for being there for you. And I'm not telling you to be an idiot. I'm telling you right now that what you can do is not let that sympathy or pity get down inside of you. Because you are no one to be pitied. You know why? 
Because the power of God that rests inside of you can absolutely shake the very walls of hell. And when I got that call, I went to my bedroom and I didn't say, Oh God, why? I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you promised me that you would protect my family. And I said, Devil, you stole from me the last time. And you know where Jackie Lee is tonight? He flew. He was going to be here tonight. But he's been on the phone with me several times. He flew to California to work all week. You know why? Because he has no cancer in his body. He was healed. And I'm telling you right now, if you will allow the power of the Holy Ghost to fill you up, and you will walk in that, you will stand up and understand who you are, and know who you are, and you can tell the devil who you are. Thank you guys so much for joining High Praises Church podcast today. We are so happy to have had you with us. If you just met Jesus for the first time and you want to commit your life to him, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I need you. I open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for answering my prayer and saving my life. Amen. God is so good. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and may he be gracious to you. Now we want you to stay connected with our socials. You can find us every Sunday and Wednesday on our Facebook and YouTube live at The High Praises Church and catch us on our Instagram at The High Praises. Can't wait to see you next week. Take care.